I have to confess the part I really like about this job of being a YouTuber is going out and talking to other Kenyans yeah, and finding out what uh, the issues are, finding out what's happening. And I did just that very recently, yeah, immediately after the surprise announcement of the withdrawal of the old uh, 1,000 Kenya shillings notes. And there was a very interesting reaction that really shocked me yeah, about the release, uh, <laughs> about this proposed uh, withdrawal of the Kenya shillings 1,000 notes. It caught me completely by surprise. And also, so far, nobody else has covered it. And I will reveal that towards the tail end of this video. But first of all, I want to touch on something which has really been nagging me concerning the leaked audio of the conversation between Nairobi Governor Mike Songo and Nairobi Women's Representative Esther Pasaris. And then we'll uh, move very quickly here to the great mystery. Which mystery am I talking about? How somebody has played mischief. Yeah, concerning the new uh, Kenya Shillings 1000 notes. Yeah. In short, if I can say in Kiswahili, while our Kenya on attack Pigana and Ofisadi, I'm <laughs> Because something just goes wrong. Indeed, most of the time, somebody somewhere throws a spanner into the works. Yeah, that just frustrates the whole effort, creates a loophole. Yeah, for the corrupt and the evil to escape. Yeah, but first, Pasaris. Now, I don't know about you, but I found uh, this issue of Pasaris saying they were taking money to Baba, yeah, that's Raila Odinga, as members of parliament. I found that deeply disturbing. I, they're taking money to Baba for what? Now, I believe I'm not naive. Yeah, indeed, to survive uh, <laughs> doing what I've been doing for all these years, I doubt whether I'd have been able to do it if I were naive. So, in my opinion, I don't think I'm naive. Therefore, I know about all these uh, funny, funny businesses that goes on with politicians, especially leading politicians. However, my issue is that for the first time, it has been brought out in the public domain. Because this audio has uh, circulated. Yeah, the audio of Pasaris asking Sonko for money. Yeah, because Pius <laughs> could not help. Now, for those who are not in the know, uh, Pius is actually Pasaris' husband. Although we Africans pronounce the name Pius, yeah, it's actually Pius Ngugi, <laughs> one of the richest uh, men in Kenya. Yeah, somebody who stays away from uh, limelight. Actually, there are very, very few pictures of him around. Yeah, he has been known at uh, social functions to prevent, deliberately block people from taking his photograph. Okay, he had humble beginnings and uh, he grew and today is one of the richest uh, people around in the region. Okay, and of course Esther Pasaris has confessed in a talk show before that she's actually a second wife. Yeah, but that's a story for another day. My issue is taking money to Baba. How? And for what? Maybe you guys can give me a few of uh, your views in the comments area below this video. Because that is just nagging me. I just, <laughs> I can't just wrap my mind around something like that. Yeah, actually happening. You know, it is one thing for Kumekucha to receive uh, privileged information from a source. And it's quite another for something to be confirmed yeah, in the public domain. Yeah, anyway, I'll be very anxious to hear what your views are. Now, the other very disturbing thing about uh, the Pasaris Sonko issue, yeah, apart from Sonko behaving very ungentlemanly, yeah, being a complete disgrace in my opinion, yeah, to men who are gentlemen. A disgrace to real men. Yeah, because real men don't treat women like that. <laughs> they don't. The only men who treat women like that, let me just leave it at that. Yeah, that was a total disgrace. But my issue is, have you asked yourself a very simple question? What was the objective 
ya for Sonko to leak out this particular audio. He has leaked some audios in the past, yeah, which have of course raised a lot of uh, controversy. And uh, we have had a rough idea of what the objective is. Now, what was the objective in releasing, because he has a lot of audio, he has a lot of other conversation, conversations he has had uh, even with Esther Pasaris, the Nairobi Women's Representative. But he chose to release this particular one. Now, in my view, the objective was, wait for this one, it's a big one. In my opinion, the objective was to deal with the Raila Odinga. Because when you really think about it, what was the meat, the real meat of that uh, leaked audio? It was taking money to Baba. Money supplied by Sonko. Yeah, but money which is given out in the name of Pasaris. She wanted to give Baba at least a million. She said the other legislators were giving each at least half a million. Now, if truth be told, Sonko is fairly new in politics. Very new. Yeah, we can even call him a rookie in politics. And there are two types of rookies. There's somebody who's learning the trade and they're in a big hurry. Yeah, to act. Yeah, to do this. In short, if I can use the Swahili word, ni Yeah, and then there's a rookie who's a bit slow. Yeah, they appear to be slow, but they're soaking in information. They're learning and they're slow to act. They're very slow to get into political games. Okay. Now, the problem is the first kind of rookie who's very fast to get into political games is bound to make mistakes. And in my view, Sonko is making mistakes, as popular as he is, as popular as he still is, is making mistakes. Because the way he's playing his politics is short term. Yeah, he's not playing uh, the long game, <laughs> as they call it. And a case in point is leaking out yeah, this audios. Yeah, something he's getting a reputation for. Leaking out private conversations he has had with people who had these conversations with him in good faith. I believe in politics, it is important for people to at least have some element of trust. Yeah. Indeed, the more people who trust you, the more powerful you are as a politician. Yeah, that's really what it is. And of course, I'm saying this being well aware that politics is a game of uh, betrayals yeah, and uh, stabbing people in the back. But still, trust is a very important commodity. And I'm just thinking now, if I was in politics, calling Sonko to discuss anything, no matter how uh, innocent, <laughs> is out of question. Yeah, I don't want my audio leaked. Yeah, I don't want my audio to be the next one to be leaked. And it doesn't mean I'm corrupt. Yeah, I mean, I could say something to him as a joke or very innocently, which could be misinterpreted. Yeah, or even the way he leaks his audios, it could be taken out of context. Because if you take a certain section of a conversation, yeah, and slot it in somewhere, it changes its whole me meaning. Yeah, if you don't have the context, if you don't know where the conversation started, then it could mean anything. Yeah, and uh, people may interpret that audio conversation I had with uh, Sonko as me being corrupt. I think you get what I mean. So, <laughs> he's not playing the long game. And in politics, that can be fatal yeah, to your political career. Anyway, the immediate question would be, why would Sonko want to do something that will make Baba look bad, that will make Raila look bad? Yeah. Now, get me right, I'm not trying to defend Raila. I'm not trying to make him look better yeah, than he really is, yeah, especially in view of this latest uh, leaked audio. No, I'm just trying to analyze this yeah, from another angle, politically. Why would Sonko want to mess up Raila? Because after all, Sonko is a staunch supporter of the president. Yeah, that one we know. Okay, in the past, he has also uh, <laughs> had uh, something to do with the DP Ruto camp. And at one point, he appeared to be a strong supporter of the deputy president. But I think when push came to shove, yeah, and he had to state clearly which side he is on, he has made it very clear that he's on the president's side. So why should he release an audio that hits out at uh, the president's partner? Yeah, part of the handshake that's ruling the country right now. Why? 
because on the surface of things, yeah, I have no evidence on this, but I'm just saying on the surface of things, just analyzing it, it would look like he's doing a favor for the DP Ruto camp. Because we all know that uh, Deputy President William Ruto has no love lost for Raila Odinga. What? Just one of the other crazy things that is unfolding rapidly in Kenyan politics. Anyway, let us now move very quickly to this mischief that has been played with the new Kenya Shillings 1000 note. Now, sample the following. You want to deal with the corrupt in your country. You want to mop up yeah, all this money which is outside the financial system. Yeah, people putting money inside uh, the houses. Okay, stacking huge sums of money. Yeah, which has been gained through corrupt means in their houses. Or as a friend of mine put it, uh, warehouses. Yeah, hiring warehouses not to store goods or products, but to store money, cash, 1,000 shilling notes. And you make a bold decision that to deal with uh, these evil people, what you'll do is withdraw old notes. Yeah, because they've stored up this money in the form of these old notes. Introduce a new one. And then uh, remove, demonetize the old one. Yeah, make it uh, no longer legal tender. Make it useless paper. Which is exactly what the government has decided to do through the central bank. Now, if you are to do something like that, surely you would make sure that the new notes, Kenya Shillings 1000 notes you are printing, would not be challenged in any way. Isn't that what you do? You would make sure. Now, our constitution states very clearly that you cannot put the photograph of an individual, his statue, his likeness, anything like that, on a note. Yeah. But what do these people do? They take a photograph of uh, the KICC, the Kenyatta International Convention Center, yeah, and then they take it at such an angle where the statue of the founding father and first president of Kenya, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, is very clearly visible. Now, <laughs> this is a no-brainer. Obviously, you know, somebody is going to challenge it. Which brings us to the most shocking realization of the century. That actually these notes were printed, yeah, knowing very well that somebody would challenge them in court. Knowing very well that they were vulnerable to being challenged successfully in a court of law as per our constitution. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, why on earth would somebody want to do that? Why? What would be the motive? Why launch something that you know is vulnerable? It's going to be challenged. Why? Folks, I'm afraid we can come only to one conclusion. Yeah, that this latest move that has been hailed by many Kenyans, that many Kenyans see as a way of dealing with corrupt and dirty money yeah, is actually not that. Once again, it is just politics. Just like the fight against corruption has just been politics, this too is just politics. Now, in my latest uh, revamped Club 1999 sensitive video, I reveal the very sensitive reason yeah, behind uh, what has been done. Yeah. <laughs> extremely sensitive that's all i can say yeah, and to be a member is very easy as you know all the information you need should be on your screen right now yeah become a member and catch up with this latest sensitive video as well as over 30 other sensitive videos we've produced in the past yeah so just do that right away meanwhile let's move on i believe it is also very useful for our purposes to consider yeah the other case where exactly what the Central Bank of Kenya did and announced on 1st of June was done in another country. Yeah, actually, it was done in the sixth largest economy in the world. Do you know which country that is? India. Yeah, the Indians are moving very fast. <laughs> I know many people don't know this yeah, because there's also a lot of poverty in India. But uh, India is a strong emerging world economy. And that number six, after the U.S., China, Japan, Germany, UK, 
and then India. Now in 2016, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, yeah, in a very surprise move that caught <laughs> many people unawares, announced that in about 50 days, the Indian uh, 500 rupee note and the Indian 1000 rupee note would cease to be legal tender. And therefore, people who had kept it yeah, in their houses or wherever would need to exchange yeah, those notes for the new notes within those 50 days. Now, older Kenyans will be sure, yeah, they'll be aware of the fact that Indians are notorious tax evaders. <laughs> oh, yes, we have seen that in Kenya, where uh, Kenyans of Indian descent, some of them, or rather quite a number of them, keep two sets of uh, accounting books. The real accounting book, yeah, which is for their own personal consumption, and then the one for the taxman, yeah, with greatly reduced uh, revenues, yeah, and uh, highly inflated costs, yeah, in order to keep their tax bill <laughs> to a minimum, yeah, and uh, com something completely different and uh, unrealistic, yeah, from what they're actually earning, yeah, in profits. We know that. And therefore, it's not difficult to imagine uh, what could be going on in India. Yeah, the government was really having a headache. So they decided to introduce this uh, surprise move in order to deal with these uh, tax evaders yeah, and illegal trade and so on and so forth. Now, <laughs> you'll be very interested to know what happened. Did they succeed? Actually, they didn't. They failed. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Various experts and various reports that came out conclusively yeah, reached that verdict that actually the move had failed to meet its objectives. The government did not catch any crooks, yeah, they did not catch any tax evaders, and within a very short space of time, the money that they were targeting to bring back into the financial system, at least 99% of it, found its way right back to where it had been, yeah, with the new notes. In short, what that means is that uh, the dirty money people found a way within those 50 days. And remember, Kenya, we've been given how many? Four months. Yeah. <laughs> 120 days. Well, in India, in just 50 days, all those racketeers found a way to get uh, new bills, yeah, the, to get the new notes. And it was back to business as usual. However, there was damage which was done. Yeah, the economy suffered. Yeah, because the people who suffered most, you can guess, are ordinary, honest people. Because what happened in banks was just chaos. There were long lines of people, yeah, lining up to exchange uh, the old notes for the new ones. And so the long and short of it, number one, it failed to, to achieve its objectives. And number two, it inconvenienced people. And number three, it damaged the economy. Yeah, production went down during those days. Many businesses were brought to a standstill, etc., etc. And it's very interesting in uh, India's case, in uh, withdrawing the old 500 and 1,000 rupee notes, the Indians also introduced a brand new note of a higher value, yeah, valued at 2,000 rupees, yeah, which is about $28.88. That's about 2,888 Kenya shillings. So you can imagine a 2,000 shilling note, or maybe more realistically, a 3,000 bob note yeah, being introduced to, uh, to Kenya. <laughs> that would be just crazy. That would be a holiday yeah, for the racketeers. And uh, that is a good case study for Kenyans to keep in mind, yeah, as we see how this one of ours will pan out. Yeah, but already I've, uh, we have discussed one reason. Uh, why uh, this thing was introduced. Shingo Pande, <laughs> if you can use Kiswahili, it was introduced and designed not to be fully effective. Yeah, because why put a, a, an image, a portrait, or rather a statue of the first president of Kenya, when we know very clearly what our constitution says. Anyway, here's yet another uh, example, you know, from this case study we can see that uh, chances of success, hey, very unlikely to work. But meanwhile, the people who suffer most are the ordinary, long-suffering citizens of Kenya. Yeah, because the rich and mighty, <laughs> they'll not suffer. They'll find a way 
and they'll issue instructions and their foot soldiers and their employees will do the dirty work and it will all be done within no time. And meanwhile, these uh, people, these racketeers, these corrupt people continue their lives as usual, as normal. Yeah, they'll have chicken and chapati yeah, for dinner as they usually do. <laughs> or whatever they usually do will continue. Their lives will go on uninterrupted. But the lives of ordinary Kenyans will be greatly disrupted and interrupted. Now, of course, one of the ways that uh, life in Kenya will be interrupted is uh, the possible consequences in terms of uh, the value of the Kenya shilling against major hard currencies. Not to mention the fact that releasing all that hoarded money into the economy yeah, within a very short time could have inflationary pressure yeah, on uh, the Kenyan economy. Now, I realize not all of us are economics uh, majors here, yeah? <laughs> so let's try and uh, define what inflation is. I remember my economics teacher in sixth form, yeah, insisting and telling us the easiest way to understand inflation is too much money chasing too few goods. In other words, the supply of money in an economy is very important. Yeah, too little of it, people suffer. Too much of it, people still suffer. Yeah, because uh, goods become very expensive because there's too much money in the economy. Yeah, prices uh, skyrocket including the prices of uh, basic things, yeah, basic food commodities. Now, take careful note of the fact that uh, despite uh, people going to court yeah, to challenge yeah, the introduction of the new notes, which will slow down things yeah, at the very least, and uh, there's also the likelihood of the whole thing will be declared illegal by a court of law. Still, chances are very high that the negative impact of this will be felt by many. Yeah, because let me just give you a very simple uh, picture <laughs> to help you understand. You imagine you had billions stashed away in a warehouse somewhere, yeah, and this thing is announced suddenly by the government. Would you wait for the court cases to decide? Would you risk your fortune yeah, of ill-gotten money by waiting for courts to decide? No, you would act immediately. Even as the thing is in court, you would uh, find a way to convert your old money into new cash. And even if the courts declare it illegal, in case they do, yeah, you would not still relax. Because the government has shown its hand. You would know, oh, this is what the government wants to do. So I must take precautions for the future. Yeah, and you'd get rid of all your old notes. But I can very authoritatively tell you that most ordinary Kenyans are looking at this thing with a lot of excitement. Yeah? And I'll reveal what uh, <laughs> I was told which shocked me. Somebody actually told me that business has been very bad. Yeah, Chris, business has been very bad. But when this thing was announced on the 1st of June, already this few one, two days, I've seen a difference. There's money. Money is back in the economy. It's trickling back into the economy. And we're expecting in the next one or two weeks, things will be very good for us. Yeah, this was a Joakali uh, mechanic, a very good one at that. And I made it a point to interview a couple of others right across the country. Yeah, don't ask me <laughs> how I did it, but I did it. And it's very interesting. This is a general feeling. The general feeling is excitement. People are expecting a lot of money to be released in the economy. Because everywhere you go in Kenya, people will say there's no money in Kenya. Yeah? And therefore, these people releasing their money will be very good for the economy. Naturally, that is a short-term view. Yeah, <laughs> not many are looking at what could happen after that. Well, let's just wait and see how things unfold. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.